This is why I don't leave the television tuned to the Exposition News Network when I go to bed. You could turn it on in the morning and accidentally be drawn into a story that could wipe out humanity by the end of the day. The IRTA Council approved Rust crew deployment to enter Japan covertly. The Secretary of the Cute Unnecessary Names Task Force released a statement shortly after, claiming to have spent a whole day thinking up the name Rust crew for their anti-robot special forces team. An investigate reports of Amida Corporation's development of human-like robots. So are they called replicants or terminators? I want to know which this game is referencing before I get too deep. That's my welcome, your ugly ass. That's the voice of Travis Willingham, once again playing a man in uniform. Because the poor guy was being typecast into that role even back in 2012. Let's go over the communication system. Use your radio if you want to respond or say something to me. If you took this game to a mechanic, he would look under the hood and immediately say, well there's your problem. You've got voice commands turned on. The voice commands almost never work and need to be repeated multiple times. So you can end up screwing yourself by trying to congratulate someone for killing the robot that had you pinned down, only for your AI companion to interpret that as a statement about their mother and what she does for a living, thereby decreasing their trust in you. And you need their trust to get the best ending. If I wanted conversation game, I'd speak to my cat. Now there's a robot that knows where the camera is placed. When Bo gets told to stay alert, the guy puts 150% into it because his eyes are about to bug out of their sockets. The linchpin for this mission is the international team meeting up somewhere in Tokyo, but that only makes me question why they didn't rendezvous outside the city and go in as a single team. They were split into four groups by nationality and sent into different areas for no reason. These wire guns will never be mentioned again even though there will be moments when they would have been incredibly useful. Listen up. Issuing tactical commands is the key to busting out of here. So. You wanna go over how it's done? I can see this mission going well if Bo is having to give his commanding officer instructions on how to give orders while they are being pinned down. Something tells me Dan might have gotten this job based on who he knows and not what he knows. Japan is a nation with strict gun laws, and I would have to imagine those laws would remain strict under a corporate controlled government like the one that rules it in the future. But that hasn't stopped someone from putting guns and ammo vending machines in every location even in sewers and abandoned flooded sections of the city. Where would be a good place to stick this scene about an event that took place 10 days ago that sets the plot in motion? Eh, just stick it in the middle of the boss fight. Uh, sir. One thing I noticed about this game is that it had the main cast voice a lot of background characters, such as Travis Willingham voicing Bergen's bodyguard, Meaning. Even when playing an unnamed NPC, Travis is still typecast into a familiar role. Drop your weapon, this is your second and final warning. I think these robots are intentionally made to sound like Android 16 from Dragon Ball. Externally indistinguishable from humans. When in God's name did robotics get this advanced? It shouldn't be that surprising. You had decades of science fiction movies, books, and games that used that concept. The tech to build a robot skinned in a living lay of cells has been around for some time now. It's just been illegal. I figured out a way to solve this problem back when I was a kid and watched Terminator. Just have everyone walk over a bathroom scale. The ones that weigh several hundred pounds despite their body type likely have a metal skeleton. We call them Hollow Children. The Hollow Child that attacked you is the first one you ever encountered. So how did you decide on a name for Hollow Children that will pretty accurately define a major plot twist about them later? Hollow Children are supposed to be indistinguishable from humans. And the only way to tell if someone is one or not is by removing their skin to see the metal skeleton. But then they pretty quickly figured out the General was also a Hollow Child after just now learning about them. You see, it would appear that Hollow Children actually believe they're human. Hollow Children are not aware that they are not human. That was the reason why one attacked Bergen who runs the world's largest robotic company, since it believed Bergen had done something to him, and that robot infiltrated the US 30 years ago. Apparently that guy never walked through a metal detector or visited the doctor in all that time. After discovering the general was a hollow child, the Secret Service don't immediately remove the president from the room and confront the general on the spot in front of the POTUS. Meanwhile, back in present day, Dan and Bo were surviving things they shouldn't. Like this. These two were walking backwards and paying attention to their surroundings in case of an attack, yet they somehow failed to notice the guy standing right behind them and the handful of children just waiting to scavenge parts that they should have noticed. They're human! And how in the hell can you tell that? Oh, how in the hell can't you? Well that's kind of the issue, isn't it? You can't tell who's human or not. So those kids could be robots. One of your team members or you could be a robot and... Oh... I see where you're going, game. Weapon scavengers. Never seen them start this young. If these kids are weapon scavengers, I can point to a dozen vending machines Dan passed on the way here that are full of them. <laughs> Actual native language being spoken in the game. I shouldn't have to take a sin off of this since it should be the norm, but here we are in this situation where it hardly ever occurs. What's the point of the giant room-sized view screens that the people monitoring the data are all wearing VR headsets? You know, it's, it's funny, but uh, my uh, briefing said this was to be a covert Operation. Back in 2012, it was still possible for Troy Baker to be cast in a supporting role. Ace to Beetle One. Command, this is Charlie. Requesting immediate renaming of the team call sign to something cooler than Beetle One. 
Sorry to burden you with my clowns. The Major puts on his best. We couldn't afford Kevin Spacey, but we will give it our best shot anyways impression. I am First Lieutenant Fei Li of the People's Liberation Army. That's the voice of Laura Bailey, once again starring in a game with Troy Baker. At least this time her character doesn't hook up with Troy's, but with Travis, who is her actual real-life husband. You would think that would happen more often, actually. I mean, they have built-in chemistry. Because we could all do with a bit of luck. Because the Japs- That's racist. In 2040 AD, the world's remaining economic concerns ratified the new Geneva Convention. One of the most controversial parts of it was Clause 21, which banned research into robots that could pass for human, or hollow children, as the media called them. So 40 years ago, they came up with a name for something that didn't exist yet? Bergen made it sound like he'd just come up with a name after being attacked by one, and no one else in the room seemed to have ever considered the idea of robots that look like people. Yet they had a treaty banning their creation. Remember, Sergeant, dishonor yourself, and you bring shame on America. Take special care in your conduct toward women. Do I make myself clear? If this game is here's a voice command with Faye and your team, it might assume you said something derogatory and take you to task for disrespecting women. Yet this game introduced Faye with Bo comparing her to a porn star, and Dan started hitting on her as soon as they met. Repeated, repeated, boss fights, boss fights. I know you can find a bar pretty much anywhere in Tokyo, but how would anyone keep one running down here in the flood zone of the old city? Dan has destroyed scores of robots on his way here that had no effect on him. But this one non-combat model robot that serves drinks triggers memories of smashing up a robot when he was a kid. Just a little while ago, this game lectured me on the importance of respecting women. Here's an example of this game respecting women with a lingering shot on Faye's ass. Do me a favor and use the back door. You people don't exactly blend in around here. Thanks, brother. You tell him, Bo. That's racist. Oh, you got to be joking. I say the same thing whenever I encounter a giant robot spider in games. I thought Wild Wild West put that idea in the bin back in the 90s. The more missiles a giant robot spams, the more those missiles will hit everything but the target. This is Japan's version of Stormtrooper aim. This game waited until several hours into the game to introduce its first quick time event, which feels like a trap to me, since I wasn't expecting it and died because I didn't have my hands on the keyboard. Aren't you a little young to be running errands for a gangster? I'm 15! This line about Yuki's age exists solely to set a trap for the player in a few minutes. She's just a farm girl from the paddy fields. 2012 was a different time if games could get away with lines like that without Kotaku and Polygon writing social commentary pieces about them. Sorry, all booked up. Too bad, too, because I would have given a stud like you a free sample. At least Laura Bailey attempted a Chinese accent with Faye, because this Japanese prostitute she also voices has a full-on American accent. Damn, when did hoes get standards? I recall this game lecturing me about respecting women. Take a look at this. You better come take a look at this cliche. The distribution of hollow children makes no sense. One ended up a general in the president's cabinet. This one ended up a poor Japanese guy working in the underground. Dan and Charlie take their sweet time before stepping in, letting several people die before putting the hollow child down. And on closer inspection, you're kinda cute. Listen, you can be my boyfriend. Wanna go out with me? If you use the voice recognition to answer yes, then you are probably now on a list somewhere. What point can there be to a holographic stripper that doesn't even get topless? You would think the entire purpose of having a digital stripper would be so you can make her wear as little as you want. On the bright side, the bouncers would have it easy since touching would never be an issue. That is possibly the worst secret entrance to a criminal hideout I've ever seen. It's in clear view of the entire club. The only thing stopping someone from using this particular machine is an out of order sign. What happens if it falls off or a drunk doesn't bother reading it first? Also, it bears mentioning that Pachinko is a gambling machine of choice in Japan and no Yakuza gambling parlor would be without them. They don't bother closing the secret entrance behind them. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. I'm in my six. Ah, <laughs> like James Bond. Who? If an old Japanese Yakuza boss knows about James Bond, I have to think a former member of MI6 would as well. What's the safest way into the upper city? Mm. You have Japanese ID, then there is no safe way in. How would Japanese IDs help them get into the upper city safely? They are clearly not Japanese, which would seem like a major oversight on the part of the planning team. It might have helped to send someone who could actually blend in, or at the very least, someone who speaks a language. Is there any way to the subway without going to the market? No. This turns out to be a lie, since once you reach the subway, Yuki disappears into a hatch in the wall. All the boss fights in this game are pretty exceptional, except for this one, which is a pain in the ass to hit with the heat-seeking rockets the game expects you to use on it. Fire in the hole. Why the hell does it take Dan, Faye, and Bo so long to realize that Rachel just planted a bomb? They are all ex-special forces, but they go through a double take before they take cover. Hurry! They just keep coming! 
You go on ahead. I'm going back for the others. Are you crazy? We gotta keep moving. Look, you're the advanced team now. Just go. There's really no reason all three of you can't go back and help Charlie and Rachel. You are not pressed for time at the moment. You are waiting for an elevator to arrive. Rachel is the one who carries explosives that can blow open steel doors. But metal grating? Well, that she needs rescuing when stuck behind. Waiting for elevators and doors to open happens way too often for me to let it pass without sending it at least once. We're in! Come on! Hurry up! To me, it looks like it's already too late for her to get on the elevator. I stand corrected. Rachel can leap a good 10 feet straight up. Are we sure she is in a hollow child? This outdoor cafe is situated on top of a sewage treatment plant. How did you send a manhole cover that heavy flying into the air? That sort of thing only happens when a great deal of pressure builds up under one, which certainly isn't the case here. No one calls the cops or even seems to care about the heavily armed gaijins that just emerged from the sewer. Every Japanese citizen in the cafe receives a phone alert about the car chase with the French rest crew members that is headed their way, yet they weren't warned about Dan's team fighting giant flying robots right underneath them. The French rest crew members are headed away from Dan in a van on the freeway, yet somehow Dan's team catches up with them on foot. Well, do not just stand there, mes amis. Hurry, get in! Is there an explanation as to why Japanese devs can get away with making the most stereotyped characters imaginable? You let a scraphead drive? And you call him Kane? I am a combat model, mademoiselle. Line number CN7. Kane is, how you say, the little joke. The Geneva Convention that banned humanoid robots didn't address the problem of giving robots ironic names that they might regret later. Japan is apparently full of those Matrix Reloaded style freeways that have giant walls running along either side with no turnoffs. Kane, is it? Oh, ice fight! Ice fight! Ah! Even advanced robots without that whole human error thing can't keep their damn eyes on the road. The Japanese detective, Kurosawa, ordered a howitzer to block their path. However, Kane jumped the barrier to the freeway below the one they had been escaping on. Yet the howitzer was already there waiting like it knew they would do just that. Thanks for the memories, I guess. Cup Noodle is both product placement and the Japanese equivalent of eating something to look like an asshole. Kurosawa managed to spot a cable stretching from the agriculture building to another across from it and correctly assumed from only this that the rest crew was about to zipline to the other building. And then there's the fact that it would be near impossible to see a thin cable at that distance. Note to future creators of killer robots, don't use Mary Poppins flying on an umbrella as your reference if you want these things to strike terror into the hearts of your enemies. Not only did he spot that cable, Kurosawa was able to pull off an impossible shot at that distance, elevation, and wind speed to accurately shoot it. Afraid not game. Dan still fell for a long time. Landing on a monorail would not avoid the very wet splat that should have followed it. Kane saves Faye from falling with his rocket boots. But instead of flying her to the building where Charlie, Bo, and Rachel are, catches up to the monorail Dan landed on. Those robots had a clear shot on Kane who was standing in front of the door at the conductor terminal, yet didn't fire a shot. Kane doesn't have to flip his USB over three to four times before he goes in. Not long from now, Dan and Faye will fall for each other. But damn if I wasn't expecting her to end up with Kane after he kept saving her like this. It would have certainly made more sense. That makes twice that Dan has been saved from a giant robot by someone shooting a rocket at it from off screen. The new order. It's more like prehistoric. They're running this country into the ground. Turning us back to a peasant society. It's like last 300 years never happened. Shindo is introduced pretty late in the game to the team, so they dump a bunch of generic backstory all at once, hoping it will stick. Shindo, how far to your base? Closer than you think, daniel son. Since Dan is short for Daniel, Shindo putting Son after his name makes sense. But come on, there is no way that was only a coincidence. Pause off, Sergeant. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's turn this romance into creepy sexual harassment by having Dan brace against Faye's inner thigh for leverage while stitching her up. You're not bad. For a Yankee. Oh. <laughs> well, you're not bad. For a rice farmer. I'll let this bit of racism slide in case it's a kink you were both into. Faye has been nothing but cold and dismissive of Dan ever since they met. A few hours later, and she's ready to get it on with him in front of a sentient French robot. I want to know who it was that programmed Hollow Children to go all googly-eyed the moment they reveal themselves. Yoshiki was aware of the plan to sneak in Amida headquarters using a bribed trucker, yet Amida takes no precautions to stop them from doing just that. I'm pretty sure they just left that trucker to die in a compound being overrun by hacked robots. You've never seen what Kurosawa looks like, so I'm not sure how you know he's in the helicopter above you. Also, I'm not sure how Kurosawa knows that you were in the Amida truck. The whole point of using the truck was so they would go undetected. And, and Yoshiki apparently didn't alert the authorities to the plan. They're circling around behind us. That's a statement that makes no sense when you were driving on a freeway. I knew this part reminded me of something. It just took the giant wheel boss to make it clear. Give Dan yellow hair and a giant sword and put him on a motorcycle, and you have the modern equivalent of the Midgar chase from Final Fantasy VII. Honestly though, this boss fight is badass enough that I'll remove that previous sin. This exact scene happened earlier in the game. Regret it. You want to stop mugging into the camera, Dan. It's awkward. If you get kicked in the head like that with a metal leg, you will not be getting back up. You just won't. Normally when you design weapons, you make them capable of being used in a wide number of situations and locations. A weaponized chandelier is going to be a niche product at best. Nature calls! Well, this isn't the time or place, so just deal with it. Easy for you to say. 
You know what I'm about to shit your pants! In the exciting final act of the game, one moment will have you fighting giant robots, and the next will have you defending a restroom while Shindo relieves himself. Rather than let Kane, a robot with hacking abilities, search the computer for data on the Hollow Children, they tell Dan to do it who triggers a lock. Then he does the same thing a second time at another station, expecting a different result. Kane, you picking anything up? Oui, monsieur. The need to duck. Kane is more interested in getting cute lines in than warning of potential threats. I would be looking for the Spanish language option for him after this. You are all under arrest. Now drop your weapons. Kurosawa gets a different voice actor for his English lines. It would have been fine had he just kept speaking Japanese. Shindo could have translated. Amada is committed to his crippled old man ruse. The real Amada died years ago and this Amada is a hollow child. Yet he uses a wheelchair even though he has a perfectly fine robot body. Kane must have been installed with the same prime directives OCP put in Robocop. He's a Bergen model and they stole much of their code from me. Bergen ripped off Amada 40 years ago. They can't still be using the same parts and operating systems from back then. If you fail to get Kane's trust high enough like I did, he just disappears from the game at this point after being controlled by Amada with no explanation for what happens to him afterward. Glad the game had time to resolve Dan's childhood trauma of smashing a robot up because he failed to stop his drunk father from beating his mom. Did you know that was an issue that was being addressed? Because I sure didn't. They didn't take my headset. Didn't take all our weapons either. Well that makes him a bad villain then, don't it? Are you sure you don't have some robot in your family tree? Yeah, you do pull off some crazy stunts, Dan. Get out of here. I was born in Nebraska, I got two parents, I just work out a lot. Now that's one way of subverting what everyone was likely believing about Dan. Minus one sin. Could be false memories. I've seen movies like that. Yeah, I bet the devs have too. Just go! I got some unfinished business to take care of. Since the devs couldn't think of anything else for Shindo to do, they kill him off pretty lazily against these failed Yoshiki prototypes. Wait, I think there might be a way out. Wow, you really put your brain power into figuring out that puzzle, Chief. Amida made robots worldwide and powered down. They're being networked together. Every Amida machine in the world is joining up to form a massive distributed system and attacking Milcom with it. Earlier, it was stated that Bergen controls 95% of the robotics market, so Amida's remaining 5% shouldn't be able to form that big of a botnet. What other targets are in the comm plan? The usual suspects, every capital city around the globe. Amada is about to nuke a good chunk of the world after taking control of the US Milcom network. Bringing about Armageddon would be counterproductive to his actual plan, as we will learn. All he needed to do was destroy this building to get rid of the evidence. You need a clear line of sight to broadcast a satellite uplink. Right, and that means it has to be somewhere exposed. Does this building have a, a large antenna? Uh, something really big. Just let me think. It takes them way too long to figure out that the broadcasting antenna would be on the roof of the building. Hey Rachel, can an RPG hit take out that thing? Sure, but only if you hit it dead center from the front. You could hit that dish with an RPG anywhere and disable it, not just the front. Those are pretty sensitive electronics. <laughs> Bo survives this. Blowing up a satellite dish causes the entire rooftop to explode. Female hollow children can be impregnated by a human male. Faye is not a hollow child. This game predicted the plot of Blade Runner 2049 five years before that movie came out. And hybrid offspring leave no mechanical traces. They're strong, they're fast, resistant to disease, but completely undetectable. Since a robot mother obviously can't have egg cells, those had to come from a human female and were stored inside it. So Faye's birth isn't something completely unnatural. She just had a robot surrogate. Wait a goddamn minute. You can scan someone and tell if they are a hollow child? I thought the whole point was that they could go undetected. If a scan is all you need, then what was the big deal? Listen. And I will tell you the truth. <laughs> Perhaps then you will understand that I have already achieved victory. Advanced AI apparently make the same mistake Bond villains always make by monologuing about their plan. That must be the Pornhub server given the way Amida was caressing it. He exposed the artificial intelligence, me, to the concepts of pain and suffering. He made it play Final Fantasy 13 games for hours on end. To ensure my survival, I imprisoned Amida. It was many days before dehydration overcame him. Killing Amida by imprisoning him in his own office would only work if Amida was the only one in the building for several days it took him to die of dehydration. And he would also have to have no way of calling out. Faye was pretty quick to accept this whole child of a robot thing and completely switch sides to kill her teammates. Genetic superhuman Faye is easily overpowered by a regular human. It would be too much trouble to walk over there and confirm that you actually killed Faye even though you were against the idea of killing her a minute ago. Too bad, soldier, but we had to keep you out of the loop couldn't risk a leak. They only learned about the AI Amida created a few minutes ago, so capturing it couldn't have been the plan from the beginning. Yet Bo and the Major act like this is what they were after all along. Any last words? Yeah. Tell your mama I loved her. 
How many of you are familiar with the French term esprit de l'escalier? It describes the feeling you get after thinking of the perfect comeback well after the moment has passed. If this game doesn't end with a final credit scene of Dan regretting saying this instead of something else, then I'm adding five sins. The Major doesn't notice Faye standing right in front of him with a sniper rifle. I guess that your mama joke really got to him. Really showing why these hybrids will inherit the Earth when they can't hit a stationary target. <laughs> You didn't think I was really gonna shoot you, did you? Then why did you play along like you were? Had Faye not shown up, Dan would already be dead. I'm pretty sure the Major is just upset about being rejected for the role of villain in Avatar. Bo doesn't survive that. The rest of the team take the same hit and come out just fine, though. That nuke is still on its way. Strike in... 20 seconds. You didn't give yourself much time to retrieve the AI before the nuke was supposed to hit, did you? Amada hacked the Milcom network. He evolved the AI at Missile Command to ASC mode. Autonomous sensory capacity. It means NC vessels now have the authority to assess the validity of orders they receive. Wouldn't that mean the now sentient warships would refuse Amada's orders of fire as well? I'll manage. I'm the survivor. That's an incredibly douchey thing to say to someone who is dying because they took the hit for your girlfriend. I got a feeling this is not the end. Well, it's been five years since this game was released and it sold terribly, so I think your sequel bait was more hopeful than realistic. Oh yeah, I owe this game five extra sins for that stupid comeback line. Damn, when did hoes get standards?